In this class, we'll talk about annotations in Java. Java provides the concept of annotations starting from JDK 1.5. And annotations are nothing but tags or labels that you put in your source code so that these tags are processed by certain tools. The tools could be your compiler or it could be some deployment tool or it could be some uh, package which runs at which is used at runtime and annotations you can apply them either to classes at the so you can apply them at the class level or you can apply them at the attribute or the field level of a class or you can apply them to a specific method of a class to one or more methods of a class or to other program elements an annotation is just like a modifier like you have the public static kind of modifiers but it is placed before the annotated annotated item without a semicolon remember all statements in java end with a semicolon but an annotation there is no semicolon at the end okay and the name of the annotation should be preceded by an at the rate character the at the rate symbol and it is pretty much similar to java doc comments except that java doc comments are inside slash star star and end with star slash delimiters and they are outside of the code whereas annotations are part of the java code itself so by itself an annotation cannot do anything it doesn't have it doesn't add any value to the code only when the annotation gets processed by a tool it becomes useful. Java provides some standard annotations. Let's say you have a class which inherits from another class and you have a method which overrides a base class method in the derived class. Then you can put the annotation at the rate override just before the definition of the derived class method to indicate that your method is overriding a method which is defined in the base class. Then there is another uh, annotation called deprecated. Okay, and once you use the annotation called deprecated, it means that that method or attribute can no longer be used. The future versions of Java may not support that particular feature, so that method or attribute may not be available in future versions of Java, and you are discouraged from using it. Okay. And sometimes you have a lot of unused code or unused variables. In your Eclipse, you'll see warnings ab about those unused variables. Or let's say you're using some deprecated stuff. And you want to not see those warnings when you compile your code, or you don't want to see those warnings in Eclipse. Then you use this annotation called suppress warnings. And suppress warnings, you can pass one or more elements to it when you pass all that means all kinds of warnings are are will be suppressed or you can say one or more you can use one or more of these like you can say unused and unchecked you can use any combination of one or more of these elements we'll see an example of this later on so annotations are written always before the declaration of a class method or a field and they can, they can include elements with named or unnamed values. And the elements must be compile time constant values. Let's say you have a class called mammal and you have declared a, de, you have defined an annotation called author details. This author details has two values, owner and date. The owner is John Smith and date is 9-11-2011. So this is how you declare an annotation. Okay, and the annotation appears before the element for which it applies to. So in this particular case, case this annotation applies to this class called mammal, and the name of the annotation is author details. And if you see, all the values are strings here, so they they are all constant values. So the annotation elements could be primitive types like numbers, integers, floats, double or they can be strings 
or they can be other other classes types class types or they can be enums and so on generally you can supply an array of values to an annotation so for example for suppress warnings I can say suppress warnings for unchecked exceptions or for deprecated uh, fields or methods so I, I can pass an array in open curly brace and close curly brace if there is just one element called value then you don't need to specify it at all so for example override doesn't need anything and annotations can be defined to have can be defined to ha have elements in it and these elements are processed by the tools that read the annotations okay and when you're creating an annotation you must use you must be it, it must be you uh, created by an annotation interface so, sh so let's say you're creating an annotation called test case so you should say public at the rate interface and test case okay and then you need to import all the classes from java.lang.annotation so you have that import statement and then you'll see that this annotation has an ID element whose default value is none okay and then you'll see these two symbols here called at the rate target and at the rate retention at the rate target and it says element type dot method so what that means is this annotation can only be applied to methods and then retention you're saying retention policy is runtime that means when the class is first loaded by the Java virtual machine at runtime this annotation will be applied so if you can apply this annotation only to methods and you can when you say the test case you can give a value of ID and give some string value to it and then there, there are there are tools which can process this annotation and that tool is called as APT Java provides that tool called APT for annotation processing so you so you use this test case annotation and pass it to APT to generate to generate the class files which will be used to process that annotation when you use it in your code so let's look at a simple example program of how we can use annotations in Java so he, here I have a class called demo annotations okay this demo annotation extends this class called my base class it has a simple method called test method okay this is so the simplest annotation is one where it, like like override at the rate override you're overriding the test method so you can provide this annotation called at the rate override to indicate to the user that this method is overriding a method which is defined in the base class okay now let's look at this in J for example let's look at this uh, get day the get day method is from the date class and here you see that it is deprecated method you have the sign at the rate deprecated before public int get day right and let's say I remove this line over here And now Eclipse shows that shows a warning here. It says the method get day from the type date is deprecated. Now I don't want to see those warnings. So I can put that back and that warning goes away. So I'm using this annotation called suppress warnings and I'm saying all deprecated methods should not be flagged as warnings anymore and that's why this warning goes away now let's look at unused variables for okay let's say I have this variable called I here right I'm not if you see this method I'm not using it at all so let's remove this I have one for the class itself I'll explain that in a little second 
So this i is not being used at all. It says the local variable i is never read. So if I want to remove that of that warning, I can put it at the method and then that warning goes away. But if you see here, I have a attribute for this class called j and even that is unused. So this uh, suppress warnings unused applies to the main method. It doesn't apply to the attributes of the class because you have defined this annotation only before the main method. So it applies to what to the one that to, to the uh, method or the class that follows immediately after it. So in this particular case the suppress warnings unused is before the main method so it applies only to the base to the main method. It doesn't apply to this variable. So it will apply only to the body of the main method. And let's say I want to suppress warnings unused for uh, for the entire class. Not not only this i, I want to use it for this j. So what you can do is you can put this guy before the class. And then you see the uh, unused warnings are gone away both for class attributes which is j in this case and also for this method attributes. Me uh, method local variables. i is a method local variable. Both are unused and I, now I don't see the warnings because this uh, suppress warnings which is defined at the class level applies to the whole class. So it will apply to all the methods in the class as also. So let's say I want to instead of saying deprecation here what I can do is I can remove this whole line. And now I see this warning for the deprecation here. So here what I can do is I can say deprecation and I can use an array. And now that deprecated warning goes away. Instead of saying all of these in an array, I can also say just all and even that will work. Either you can be specific about which warnings to ignore or you can say all as well. Okay, so this is how annotations work in Java. Why don't you try this program and play with it and see how you can use annotations in your programs. Damn, I didn't start the recording. I thought I did. <laughs>